You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menunos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Justified After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Justified After Show. All right, welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us for another After Buzz After Show for Justified Season 5, Episode 8, Whistle Past the Graveyard. I'm John Comerford. I'm joined in Studio B by Tamara Bird. Hey, everybody. And Steve Bottomley. Hola. And helming the booth is Roya. Thank you very much, Roya. Appreciate it. Matt's away due to illness this week. That's right. So Matt won't oh. be joining us this week. Yeah, I know. Yeah. We'll sorely we missed. Miss but uh, we hope everything's doing well for him and that he'll be back next we're week. We're going to have so much time at the end when we talk about where we're at. What we're doing, right. Yeah. Exactly. That adds <laughs> another like five minutes. minutes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, before since we have so much time, let's just jump right in. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, I wanted to talk, start with Raylan. Uh, I, you know, so much was revealed between Wendy and uh, Kendall and Jack, and we met Jack for the first time. That Uncle the, Jack, Uncle Jack, Uncle Jack, the one ear piece, the sunglass wearing guy yes. drives a nice classy. Chevelle, by the way. Classy. Yeah, very classy. Mm-hmm. That is such a great way to just show and not tell. You <laughs> I know, know. You know. You're pretty. Not, you know the guy as soon as you see his sunglasses. Yeah. Just that yeah. one. The one. And very cool. I see that. I'm just curious. Like, okay, who came up with that? I know. Was it was like it? on the. Did I? actually happen on set did he like yeah. break it and go no this would be cool or, I mean, or was that in the in the page was it, in the page? Was it yeah. on the page did the writers go yeah this is cool I, you know because it happens either way i mean that was fun mm-hmm. i mean i mm-hmm. thought it was great mm-hmm. right away mm-hmm. <laughs> especially jack. when he puts it on jack the scammer <laughs> all right but before we get to that we also get to uh find out about the caller seven beat uh which uh rayland learned last week right so caller we number see, seven caller number seven so we, he uses it to his advantage and <laughs> wins a little jackpot so to speak a couple thousand dollars yeah. exactly so he's off to florida uh, of course, to uh, visit his daughter. So, you know, I mean, it kind of seemed a little bit last week like that was just a throwaway. We yeah, talked about it could, at the yeah, end of the podcast. Exactly. We know, do you think he's going to use that? No, that's silly. And then, yeah. you know, and then it comes up. He, he even mentions it. Yeah. Talks about it. But, and but then it goes even further to ask yeah. Allison. I mean, sure, why not? I mean, but it did seem that I thought that was a wonderful scene because Allison's going, wait a minute, you're going to invite me down to see your ex. Right. Yeah. And that was a little weird. And he even cops to it. Yeah, it's not weird. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird. But, you know, Maybe I'm you trying. don't meet her. Maybe you won't even yeah, meet her. Yeah, the whole thing is strange. I, I do wonder if they're going to keep that alive because or, or was that just like a little carryover of, hey, you know, I, I got it. it. It didn't do a lot in that episode except. You know, you keep can, what part alive? The, the, uh, the fact the that Caller seven, 7 beat? Okay, yeah, yeah, the Caller 7 beat, because yeah. that seems like... Because he did kind of justify, well, it's not even really my money. Yeah. So... Well, can, for me, it harkens back to when he was making money, a little extra side money, right. and was putting Doing it in right. his shop. Right. For the, you know, right. Was, and, and back and then, never, it, was for the, it was for his child. His own child. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Now he he's giving away to somebody up. else's child. So they're still carrying the father theme there, because it was certainly very uh, fatherly. Mm-hmm. Paternal of him to help the kid out and everything mm-hmm. like that. So, mm-hmm. but I thought that was interesting how it used to be in the song short. Now it's just winning it in caller seven. He, he's, he seems. I want to have, know how to become caller seven. Yeah, no kidding. Who doesn't? A little, yeah. little extra spending cash. Yeah. I'm just saying he seems to have a hard time holding on to the yeah. extra yeah. cash whenever he does get it. He does. <laughs> it's stolen. He? he gives it to a kid. It's like you do have a little girl yeah. in Florida. I know. I know. Yeah. Could buy savings bonds for her. You could. <laughs> You can invest in green stamps. Mm. Oh, he, you know, and we, we also <laughs> see how, because you know, he was mentioning it, that I'm not exactly sure how he referred to Arlo, but it wasn't in the most glowing of terms. Uh, but it, we can see how the, the fatherly instincts uh, that he has have been sor- sorely um, well thwarted by having been the son of Arlo because he doesn't know yes. the fact that you know, maybe I should save this for my kid. Yeah. Or send it to her, some, yeah. you know, whatever, or, or provide for her future. So I'm like, nah, because I mean, it's really nice of him to do to kids. I don't even know if it passes his mind. That, it's yeah. just but, all ill-gotten gains. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> Kendall seven. gets Kendall gets coerced into a car with oh candy God. and oh. candy and puppies, which yeah. was very funny. It was I thought that was hilarious okay. that opening scene with getting Kendall into get, yeah. get in, just get <laughs> in. You got big. You got old. <laughs> you know? And his droll Just style. Just great, great banter. Yeah. Great banter. 
And that was a great car, man. It was a cool car. Yeah. It's like, I mean, how, I mean, I know he stole the money, so that's how he got the car. But I go, that's, that's a little too cool for that guy. <laughs> you know, yeah. if, if you're if, if you want information on like where somebody is, mm -hmm. do you really want to be intimidating and mean looking sitting in a bar, or do you want to kind of go, hey, had you have you happened to see Jack as opposed to who are you talking to? Oh well, yeah. Well, <laughs> unless you want to intimidate right away. <laughs> well. Right, yeah. which I think is that guy's M.O. Know, yeah. That's what he does. Does he yeah. not know that he was talking to a crow? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, Maybe he didn't. Not. Apparently he didn't. I guess he yeah. did not. Maybe he just thought he was talking to Well, the way Wendy took it, he was telling I don't work here. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm a silent partner. Right. So Wendy's in the bar. Yeah. Jack's, he's looking for Jack. Michael. Michael, yeah. He's looking for Jack. Michael, a very, um, shall we say, impressive Persuader. He's yeah. a people person. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's, you know, he, I, I think he used to be with up with people. Maybe. Yeah, early nice. on. Maybe so. Used to be do, on the Disney Channel. Do you recognize channel. him? Have we seen him? Yeah, we've oh seen him a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not in this show, but yeah, yeah. he's right. been in a ton of things. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. That's one thing about this. They always have these actors where you go, oh, that guy. Even Jack. I mean, we've seen yeah, him in a ton of these. <laughs> that's always the same conversation. Yeah. You know that guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen that guy. Well, and and what we, we've known from many discussions that so many people want to be in the show, whether, yeah. even if it's just to be killed. <laughs> right. Shot. Yeah. Right. There was a little, there was a, um, actually an article that I'll talk about later during the okay. news. Um, I'm, I've tweeted it, or I will tweet it out, um, that Walton Goggins yeah. was talking about um, early on in his first or second season. He was talking about how um, he wasn't really he wasn't really liking. How, oh no, no no I take it back totally take it back okay. Jerry Burns it was Jerry Burns oh Jerry Burns thank you uh, also known as Win Duffy was talking about how he's now this is the first time he is a series regular he right. was he was guest star sure. all up along these times and so he was he was kind of complaining not complaining but he was you know not really happy with how Win Duffy wasn't was being was not being used uh -huh. as much as he thought he should be. And um, Graham Yost said, look, here's the thing. We start using you too much, you die. So you got to pick your battle, so <laughs> to speak. And he kind of went, "Good point." got it. <laughs> see you in season six. <laughs> yeah, I'm guessing whoever gets a script on this, they flip through to see if they have a line at the end. <laughs> yeah. We might still hear. Yeah. Well, like Johnny, we didn't really talk about it last week, but he was so unceremoniously killed. Right. I mean, it's just boom. Right. We're making a comic, he killed mid-sentence, mm -hmm. and that's it. We, and th we're not going to be talking, we didn't talk about him at all. Well, no, he did, uh, it's not a big part, and Boyd said, I just shot the last remaining uh, blood relative. Mm -hmm. Right. So just casually mentioned there uh, to uh, for effect and all. But I, I was shocked a little bit by how it was unceremonious. I mean, it was really kind of... And I don't think we're going to be seeing much of The Office if uh, Raylan's heading down to Florida. I, you know, I think, I, you know, the... Uh, I don't know where he's the, going, though. Yeah, the, uh, the uh, coming attractions had him down in Florida. Is that right? Well, he was somewhere in a bar with a pretty woman. Shocking. Yeah. <laughs> and he said, well, I'm on vacation. So he, he could have been in Florida. He didn't, didn't necessarily have to be in Florida. I thought the last thing was, I'm just here for the ribs. And the ribs. So I, I figured he was down in Florida. They have ribs, they have ribs in, in Florida? In, uh, in Kentucky, too. No, just um, Florida. Okay, so <laughs> so can we continue talking about yes, Raylan yes, okay, and sorry. Wendy? Because we keep yeah. getting off track. Um, Steve. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so we find out that Kendall is... Was and we find out from Kendall. Who his parents are, yeah, we are find, Wendy and He knows Jack. that Wendy's his mother and yeah. Jack's his father. Yeah. And he's known yeah. for yeah. quite some time. He said he figured it out, figured it out a while ago. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, he is obviously one of the smarter crows, so, um, <laughs> which again is not much. So yeah, yeah. at fifteen, right? Yeah. Okay, there I didn't see any of that coming. Did anybody else do that? I mean, I didn't it didn't even enter in my realm of thought. I did at the much. the minute we saw Jack. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay. Because and the whole the, time I was thinking, looks? Uncle, who is he? How is he his uncle? Uh -huh. How is he Kendall's uncle? That doesn't make sense to me. And I was I kept thinking and thinking. And I was like. Well, that doesn't make sense, and that doesn't make sense, and that doesn't make sense. And then the minute they had breakfast together, I was like, oh, well, this is obvious. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah I, I knew I, I knew right I, away. Well, yeah. I and I, I just figured, you know, it's like uh, I have plenty of uncles in my life that aren't related to me. They, that's just what we call yeah, them. Yeah, of course. So that's what I thought. Hmm. So, but, okay. No, you, you I, the, right the, because, wow. you know, as, as we talk about in writing, um, that they obviously had history. You know, they, mm -hmm. were, they, were, us they were having old conversations. Yeah, but I just, I didn't, I didn't see them, he, him being the dad. Well, like, I did. All right. Well, so, we yeah. didn't find that thing interesting. We just wanted to know what they had for breakfast. Right. <laughs> so, um, 
Jack and Kendall are together tr and tr getting ready to jack a car. <laughs> yeah. Kendall's like, yeah. what? We're stealing a car <laughs> well, now? I thought, what I thought was so amazing is how good Jack is at lying. Well, good in the sense of uh, he's so proficient. Uh, proficient at lying. Not even that. He's so quick to lie. Let's put it that way. Yes. I'm not saying he's necessarily good at it. Yes. But he just li everything is a lie. And not only that, he throws it away with, I, I thought that was evident. or I thought that, I thought that was clear. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, you're with me. Yeah. And then, you know, and clearly Kendall knows that he's, he's a liar and, and known all along that, well, not all along, but for a long time now that it's his father. That's his dad. So, and, and desperate to be with him or in some respects just to get out of there, I guess. I, I, he's jumping from the frying pan into the fire because he can't right. be. A, he knows Uncle Jack uh, is not the best guy to be with. Right. But that's how but bad it hopes, is with the crows. But he's yeah. got hopes, you know. What, we're going to go ride roller coasters? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's uh, some semblance yeah. of it. Uh, oh, yeah, no. you know. Yeah, but it's, no, it's, in, it's instead of riding roller coasters, we're going to steal cars. Yeah, which is kind of a roller coaster. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He keeps discovering he's in the same boat, just yeah. a different, you know, just a different yeah. version Position, of it. Position, yeah. No one's dying around him, so that's a step like, up. Yeah, exactly. He doesn't have to keep his mouth shut about that. Right. With Jack. Although the uh, Michael, right? Yeah, he's a damn good tracker. I know he's amazing. Right. Isn't he? <laughs> Better than a U.S. Marshal, which they, you know, even speak to. But right, we, so we all gotta go. How the hell did he find how is that, that he shows up? There's kind of a rule that if you have a roadblock and you're riding, hit it quick, fast, and get over it. <laughs> That's so exactly that, what so they that do. people just, just don't even pay they attention. They just go, okay, whatever. It's and called the, suspension of disbelief. Yeah, <laughs> but later on, and they did it quite well. They yeah, had in the car with Wendy. Yeah, yeah, he's like, I don't know. I it happened, and I don't care. So yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. I don't give a shit how he yeah. found him before me. Why you know? Why you spend time on that? It's not important. It's important dude. <laughs> and none of you Yet should Kendall, either. Exactly. <laughs> Let's just move on. Uh, Very facile of them. Let's move on. Right, exactly. <laughs> so she calls Raylan yeah, and exactly. says, I need your help. And do you think she called him not just because he's a Marshall Oak, because none of her brothers are in town. Who else is she going to call? Yeah, and they're buddies. Yeah. Oh, yeah, buddies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, she's acquainted with him anyway. It was. It's interesting because it was actually Allison who told him in her own way. It's just that look. Yeah. Yeah, you got to help the kid. You go help the right. kid. Right. Yeah. So. Because up until so then, let's put his face, it. Raylan was doing a good job. Of, yeah, call 911. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> was. He was being very every, persuasive. Yeah. Everything. Uh, now, w w and seeing as how that ended, do you think she had made her decision that she was going to cut it off? Or do you think that happened? Yeah, well, you mean Allison? Gone? I have yeah. no idea. That's what I wanted to talk about is I don't exactly know what was the turning point. Why did she decide, okay, we're done? Um, I didn't see it. Yeah, I mean, you know, when he gave her the bathing suit, she yeah. says, oh, isn't that a little cliche, essentially, mm -hmm. you know, um, a lingerie? And he's yeah. like, no, 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 it's a bathing suit. See yeah. how romantic I am? Yeah. Um, you know, I feel like she, because she's, she's been reluctantly getting together with him from the very beginning. You know, you're a cop. Mm -hmm. I don't really. I, th that's trouble. No, I. Yeah, you're right. Absolutely. But I just. Did, I was just wondering. Was there a point that I missed in this episode? Because I didn't see one well, point where she went. Where I think it happened last week. I think did. it happened last week with Wendy Crow getting her suspended from her job. Hmm. Okay. Do you think she made the decision then? Huh? Yeah. Then why would just, she agree? Well, I guess she didn't. Well, really. well she no, she did $2, agree to go to Florida. Hotel, motel room sounds fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Until she learned that Kendall was in jeopardy in some right. fashion. Right, yeah. Said, okay, well, no. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I still don't get it. I, I, you know. I'm just trying to picture a $2,000 motel room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, is there like an extra pad? <laughs> a paper? A paper, on? yes. Uh -huh. um, okay, and I keep trying to keep us on track, and we Sorry. keep getting off track. So Raylan is helping Wendy, he's, yeah. and he's doing it because he's trying to get information from her about, about the, the brothers. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So she, they ultimately set up the... Which is the, also a little strange just because cause you brought the point up. He's on vacation, but he still wants to get information mm -hmm. about the coast. So he's never on vacation. Yeah, because it's personal for him. Well, he says, no, it's a cancer, and I'm a <laughs> doctor, <laughs> yeah. and I'm just trying to cure the patient. Right. Kind of cancer. Crow. I have but, crow cancer. Yeah. But he, and that's, you know, that's absolutely right. That's how he sees them all. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, if we can get rid of this cancer, Harlan would be a great place to live. Right. So you right. think it's personal. It's not like he's doing that to, to, to in any way uh, get back in good with, at the marshal's office to do a solid there? Mm, just to, no, I, I mean, I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. I think it's personal Feels, because yeah. he's, he's connected in Kendall because, like mm -hmm. he said at the end, I kind of see myself in you. Right. And, you know, it's personal in the sense that he still wants to 
get the Crowder Crow <clears throat> clan. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> wants, well, he wants the crows out of Kentucky. That's yeah, for sure. Yeah, he's made that very clear. It feels really personal. Okay. Yeah. Um. So then, when they when they eventually get uh, Michael to arrive. Yeah. And he finds out all that is revealed about how the, what the business is that Jack actually yeah. does, what Michael means to Jack, how mm. they're how they're connected. Kendall's going, what? What's going on? <laughs> Finally learns. The truth about what his dad did. The rapist, and that was kind of interesting too. That Kendall seemed to buy into the whole rapist story. Well, until then he said, "I know you didn't," you know, because a couple of scenes later he says, "I know you did, you weren't a hero, and that you didn't save right, a right, uh, save a save woman a from being woman raped." Being raped. Mm -hmm. So he he but, knows that part. But then when when they're all in the parking lot, yeah, he says, "You mean the rapist?" Yeah, because that's the only thing he only thing he knew how to what what to refer to that as because he knew mm. the story, but he knew he wasn't a hero. Mm. about it. He knew there was a person oh, in okay. a, a coma, that's all. Right, right. right. So he had no other frame of reference to speak of that. So uh, Raylan calls New Deal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. New you're Deal, all, people. You're all yeah, going to jail. My own course. Um, yeah, you're both under arrest since you're a fugitive and you're a dick. <laughs> it's an official term, by the way. Yeah. Wouldn't that be interesting if marshals could go around arresting people for being right. a dick? Yeah, that would there's, be. There's actually a code for it. <laughs> yeah, like fifty-one, fifty-one. Yeah, so. yeah, something like that. Fifty-one, fifty. Um, so he arrests both of them after a little bit of a scuffle, mm -hmm. and then and then he gives Kendall the money, which we've talked about. But the line there, I thought, was really fantastic in the conversation between the two of them. The uh, kid, it gets better. <laughs> I'm not a homosexual. <laughs> I'm not gay. <laughs> Because <laughs> of the whole It Gets yeah. Better campaign yeah. that was out. I just thought that was funny. Yeah. Uh, then we have... Uh, I wanted at one point in that scene to rail and go, look, yeah. and just give it to him straight. Like, all right, yeah. knock it off. Yeah. You just got a solid here. Shut up. Yeah. And yeah, he never was, did. And it just, uh, that kind of bugged me. Yeah, I was kind of expecting something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, and, but he just... Because it's interesting. You're going to give the kid all your motel money. But and at the same time, you're just kind of blowing him off. You know, in the sense well, of like you're letting them say all of this, you know, mm -hmm. stuff and be abusive and and you know, if anyone was a dick in that scene, it was Kendall. Yeah. Um, and not, not respond to it. Well, the thing I wanted was the thing that uh, you, you hope somebody gets at that age where you is, you just you you don't well you jack them against the wall so to speak, right? Figuratively speaking, and right. you give them the, you lay down the truth, right? Say, look, could, you know, you right now he was playing the victim role. Oh, yeah, a little bit, you know, like, oh, poor me, that kind of thing. And right. you just say, look, you can do what you want. I mean, it, you, you're you now at cause. You make the choices now. Right. So you can be a jerk or not. You can fall on your foot, father's footprints or not. Well, here's the thing. What One thing that we do know is that Kendall is not, this is not his last episode. Oh, he yeah. is going to figure into future episodes. So that may still be coming. Yeah. You it know. Just, it was, for From, me, it was ripe for it. It's like somebody do say something. Cause, yeah, it was. It was. Yeah. And I mean, all I can figure is that that he will do that because, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, he did similar situations with Loretta. Yeah. You know, getting her on track and stuff like that. And, you know, didn't didn't throw her up against a wall. But mm -hmm. well, figuratively, maybe yeah. maybe it's the fact that, you know, that he knows he's exposed to the crows and he knows mm -hmm. that that can't be good. And he's probably got a lot on his plate. Maybe what he doesn't need to hear right now is how much of a petulant little brat he's being. Yeah, and mm -hmm. he's on vacation and working <laughs> on a day when he doesn't need to. True, he could be in Florida. <laughs> That's right. You know, and he's and, th and so then and then he finds out minutes later from uh, Wendy that she doesn't know anything else was, about Mexico. Yeah. All she knew was Mexico. Yeah. Yeah. It's all for naught, except for the fact that the most important thing was that he got the kid back and this kid's a safe. A crow played yeah. him. What a surprise. Right. Yeah, Shocking. Exactly. Shocking. And a, a crow lawyer played him. And insult to injury when he gets back and he tells Allison all about it. <laughs> and she says, we're done. <laughs> I'm breaking it off. Bye-bye. <laughs> what was his last night? It was like, well, what do you know about that? What do you know about that? <laughs> I didn't it, see that coming. It, see? I was it, like Randall. I didn't see it coming either. You know, the whole, that whole storyline, again, f did feel a bit like season one, where they had this, like, little contained storyline mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that, okay, let's drop it in because we got Mexico, we got Ava. And we have to keep them apart for a while, too. Yeah, we, or we, they're not going back to the office. We're not going to be able to bring in any of his buddies. 
Right. So. Right. Well, there there is some validity to that comment because you were saying as we were watching that it was a, it's this seems a little um, in, inflated mm -hmm. the the storyline. And here's the deal: mm -hmm. um, Wendy Crow was not supposed to be in this many episodes. Uh -huh. She was supposed to be originally in, I believe, it was four episodes. Mm -hmm. And when Jean Baptiste, Jean -Baptiste. That actor wanted out and got killed early. They had planned on having him through most yeah, of the season, of the story, yeah. and so they. Uh, Graham Yost talks about how on Monday mm -hmm. they had to break a new. They story. they figured out that they were not going to have Jean Baptiste, and that was going to going to change the script that was coming in on Tuesday or Wednesday. Wow. And so they had to come up with the idea of what what are we going to what storyline are we going to bring up. Mm -hmm. Um, in order to fill that void. And so oh. they, and he talks about how he pitched to uh, Alicia Witt that she's going to get to hold a shotgun and shoot a shotgun. <laughs> What'd she think about that? And she liked that idea. Yeah. So obviously, you know, so that's, so there is some validity to why yeah. it didn't exactly uh, seem yeah. as smooth maybe yeah. as some of the other storylines. But, but I think it made perfect sense because oh, we I had think, Kendall in oh, there. We've got, the, great. we've got the the parent. Yeah, and I loved it. Learning all that about Kendall and stuff like that. I thought that part was wonderful. And it gave us an opportunity again to see how smart he is and how yeah. just just more character stuff about Kendall that's really interesting. Yeah. But but I, I just think you need to be a little careful when you do that because you've positioned Kendall in a horrible place, and then he says, "Uncle Jack, you know, mm -hmm. where are you?" Yeah. Okay, so you're kind of expecting that adventure to be the same as the place he's trying to escape. Based the adventure on how, with Uncle Jack. Yeah, that's based to come. on, you know, you're kind of expecting, oh my God, he's a bank robber and here we go, or, you know, or whatever. Right. And then to have a kind of almost a comical sort of, I'm well, a he, goofy. But he's, he's Dewey. He is, he is Dewey, mm -hmm. and but Dewey has been locked into mm -hmm. his goofiness. You know what I mean? And then to, to kind of take Kendall and put him on this other little adventure, it just feels out of place. Right, at, at a little point. bit, a little yeah. off point. Yeah, it wasn't a bad storyline, and it was fun to watch and everything, but I just felt it was kind of like, you know, you dug into the bag a little bit. Right. To, you know. All right, you know. fair enough. Well, that... Well, well, interesting. I'd love to hear about everybody else has to say about this, because we got some really interesting comments, didn't we? We Emma? did. We got some? some good comments um, from YouTube, and I printed last week's comments instead of this week's comments, so I don't <laughs> so have we that. Won't be talking about but it. they were very nice. <laughs> so and thank you very much for writing. Perhaps in I'll read them comments. next week. <laughs> Please continue to do that. That's very helpful to us, and we really love to hear what your theories are and what you think is happening uh, with the show or what's going to happen. Uh, I especially love the outlandish ideas that people come up with. Yes. So keep them coming. Go to iTunes. Go to YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, rate and comment, and uh, and and just get, uh, let us know what you're thinking. Yeah. Boy, when and Matt doesn't show do. up, we are totally unprepared. Aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I was absolutely <laughs> prepared. I just brought the wrong ones. And if he had been here, he usually backs me up on that. That's so right. in that sense, yes, he would he would have saved my butt. <laughs> but I printed last week's messages instead of this week's messages. That's the only time I get caught up is when you bring stuff in. Now <laughs> I have to pay attention. Oh, goodness gracious. Damn it. Damn it. Moving on to Ava in prison. So we get okay. to see her getting deeper into this world. Yeah. First of all, I have to know, Tammy, what do you think about the scene where she gets her shoulders dislocated? I don't know because I didn't watch it. <laughs> I thought they were going to actually break her arm up uh -huh. here. And yeah, I was trying oh, to yeah. figure out. And I didn't know it was dislocated until she got to the infirmary because <laughs> so, I could. I fast forwarded because so I when, saw what was. You put right. the toilet paper uh -huh. roll So as soon as she goes in there, what did you do? Mute it? And you just go, I don't know. I just fast forwarded. Want... Okay, because it was too much for you, right? Yeah. Okay. I was even reading a, a viewer comment uh -huh. that said, and I think it was actually a man who said he had to mute the sound because yeah. he didn't want to hear Ava get her shoulder dislocated. So I'm not alone. Yeah, no, I, that, that was interesting. I didn't, I didn't know that you did that. You guys are disgusting for actually watching. That's what I want well, to say. Is it painful? It seem like it's painful. <laughs> Does that hurt? Is that kind of like a bee sting kind of hurt? Or no? Just kidding. Um, so she dislocates her shoulder, so she gets uh, g go to the infirmary and talk to right. the med tech and see with because uh, they have information that that's how they're going to get the drugs in. Uh -huh. uh, uh, but of course, she bumbles that a little bit because you think she'd be a little more clever about that. Well, you know, but I didn't think it, it's not like I didn't think everybody was listening. I thought it was pretty quiet. I mean, I didn't think she was doing that. And she, well, and her hand. language was pretty careful because it almost sounded like she was just trying to get, to get you know. Yeah. Heavy uh, painkiller. Tylenol just with some, codeine. Yeah, the, but, you know, I dislocated my shoulder. I need right. some heavy aspirin. Ain't going to do it. Oh, no, you get aspirin. <laughs>
<laughs> I, I was kind of surprised at the scene. It it, it seemed kind of um, like a rookie mistake to ask well, she, in front she, of for her to do that. Yeah, a little bit. Asking for whom though? But again, I'm looking at the way it was. You know, the composition of the shot. I didn't see anybody really close enough around him to hear. Then, then it, then it's the overlap of the viewer. It's the overlay of the viewer of knowing the other conversation that's mm -hmm. happening, and not the actual conversation that's happening. So it's well, my bad. Well, okay. Um, you, but you mentioned the same thing later. She's having the conversation in with Judith. Yeah. In the cafeteria, cafeteria. So yeah, yeah, the cafeteria one, and and there was uh, a guard closer than everybody else. And, yeah, they right. Were, that was a pretty loud conversation. They yeah. pulled back, and there was a guard standing. No, it was, they were stage whispering. No, I, they weren't stage whispering. No, they they were real whispering. Yeah, <laughs> but I think you do have to hire deaf guards to, to you know. <laughs> well, a lot of guards look the other way. That's basically we, we learned okay. that from earlier. Steve is like the voice of non-belief uh, today. This was a rough. This was you, a you rough episode your for me. Oh. Well, here and you know I'll get to the reason why, but you know we're not there yet. I will say that the guard that came with the uh, assistant uh, in the later, shower, yeah, yeah, great hairdo. I don't even. Was it a big afro? Was it the big no, afro? It was like um, like a like a mushroom cloud bomb thing going off. It was, wow, it was oh. wild. I didn't. Okay, see. you didn't Excellent. notice it? Okay. No, no, I didn't. I was, I didn't, no. didn't notice it. So no. in the shower, I almost saw boobs. She almost, <laughs> almost. Uh, in the shower, Ava gets the two conditions from this nurse. Yeah. I will help yeah, you. That was yeah, but don't tell but Judith. But number one, don't tell Judith. And you have a man outside. He's going to have to do something for me. I'm not going to tell you what it okay. is. So. That was really interesting because um, he's not been able to do a lot for her on the outside. Mm -hmm. I mean, no. I'm sure he can do whatever is going to be requested. And it's not going to be an easy, small thing. No. Right. And the other thing that's interesting is... How does she know she's actually going to get the heroin? I'm assuming they've had a conversation, but we haven't seen him visit. He's been down in Mexico. No, no. and here's the thing. Um, Graham Yost says one of the themes of this season, especially for Ava, is that she keeps on solving her problems, but the problems don't go away. Mm -hmm. It's just new problems and often worse problems. Um, and he says what this is, what the the uh, favor is that mm -hmm. her man outside is going to have to right. do for the nurse is going to be revealed next episode. And he says, I will also say that Ava and Vo Boyd will see each other next week for the first time since episode five. Uh, okay. Well, okay. It's, well, they're due. They need to get back. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. He's so cagey when he gives when he's asked questions about what's coming yeah, up next. Yeah, he's very, very and uh, yeah, and the interviewer said, "Yay!" And he goes, "See, I give," yeah. which I just think was hilarious because <laughs> yeah, if you read those, so he's reticent. so he doesn't give anything. He does not give anything yeah. except watch next episode or watch two episodes from now. <laughs> um, they just wrapped the season. Uh, I believe it's today, yesterday. Uh -huh. Or maybe my, I don't. I'm not sure. In the last couple of days, and uh, and we're doing reshoots today. So you know they've been they've been working hard the last few days to to, uh, to get up. the whole season done. So yeah. They still kind of have Ava isolated in mm -hmm. her storyline, though. Mm -hmm. They have her in general population, but she's only interacting with one, maybe two people. Right. Mm -hmm. And the threat of the other. Yeah. Of, you, you know, there's no external threat putting pressure on her. Well, because they would put a stop to that. So, but you'd still, uh, you know. He went back and put a good old beating on our uh, white Nazi guy. Right. Whatever we well, I, you know, I, I think that there, there has been conversation, I've read, um, about the comparison of Ava in prison to Orange is the New Black. And that's such a hot show, uh -huh. has been a, a hot show. And so I think they're probably a little concerned about repeating beats or looking uh -huh. like they're copying that show, mm -hmm. even though Graham Yost didn't watch it until after season right. one of Orange is the New Black is all done and he started getting Ava into print prison because other writers said you need to watch so this. that you don't repeat yeah. yeah so I think they're they're trying to make prison interesting without make it making it look like something that we've already seen and seen very recently um, you know and continue the Ava story because they've, they've got to get her out or do something with her yeah but here's soon. the thing I do like about what they're trying to do is yeah. that they, they, they they're no, she's no longer at somebody else's mercy she's trying to be the one right. to push right. the energy to right. make the decisions <laughs> and I also like that every decision has that uh, consequence which makes it worse so she gets deeper and deeper right. and gets deeper into trouble right. things get harder all that kind of stuff I, for me anyway I just wish they'd push that envelope even more it, it, it's, it's too slow for me 
and I, I just want that to, to, to have more energy and more uh, speed, I guess. I mean, even, la- I'm sorry, even <coughs> last week when, you know, there is the weird thing about the, the guard gets to have sex with the girl and, mm-hmm. you know, the plumber's there and all that weirdness going on. It, even though that wasn't specifically about Ava, she was part of it, it was still an interesting look at that world. At that world, yeah, because we hadn't been in there. No, but I want to. I want you to clarify for me what you're saying. What What are you saying? You want stepped up? They, is they, Ava's the, jeopardy, or a- Ava's being at cause, or well, all of those things that they're doing, I like. I just think it's go, it's it's taking too long to get there. Uh, if, for instance, the, the, her story moves along very slowly. There's this little bit. The next time, right. we, we're only moving little scratches. Right. right. And I'm going. Why were you taking so long? We don't need to. In, in my estimation. Right. Well, I, I think, you know, when she shivved a guard, you know, that uh-huh. was a pretty big deal. Her getting beat up in prison and cutting her hair off, that was a pretty big oh, deal. That's, and I'm saying I like all that stuff, but it, right now, the last two or three episodes, it was like, okay, I have to do the drugs now. Especially in this episode, it was like, okay, I'm going to break the shoulder. I talked to the guard. We have another scene with it. And they could have played that uh, out in one scene, like, shut up, don't say that. It, you know, mm-hmm. it, it did, we didn't have to have it in three scenes. It could have been done in one. And I'm just... For me, it's like well, we're just barely inching that along. And, well, and, yeah, and th- it doesn't. For me, it doesn't heighten the jeopardy to inch along. I think it has everything to do with what I've already said. You know that they've with that they don't want the comparison, and they've got only so much story that they can cover with Ava because mm-hmm. they could if they, you know, if they if they step it up too much, they're going to be done with her. On episode nine. Well, I want to. I want them to be done with her in prison, because <laughs> either, either right, we want her out something. of prison. Yes, yes. that's yes. what I'm saying. Either yes. do something I, well, more interesting in prison, or get her out. I agree with that. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, me too. Because yeah. I like the Jail stuff break. that's happening, but it, it but it's it, it, we need to really push the envelope there, because otherwise we're just in prison, and right. I don't care. I think Dewey plans a jailbreak and gets her out. <laughs> yeah, he's so good at that stuff. Yeah. He really yeah. is the brains. Dewey, of Dewey the doesn't plan anything. I don't think that'd be in the same sentence. No. So. <laughs> so anyway, so that's the deal. There's there is a uh, quid pro quo to get the drugs in scenario, mm-hmm. yes. Um, but she still has to set up actually getting the drugs, which she hasn't done that yet. But may not be that easy. Depending well, I mean, on the does she does she, she know that Boyd is now in the heroin business? You know, I don't know. I can't remember back and whether or not they actually discussed that. Cause Where uh, it is seems Matt to, when we need I know. Him. It seems like all their discussions were not about that. They were about right. other things. Because the last thing she knew was that the, the, uh, his, his shipment was hit. Right. Yeah. So she knew he was trying to do that. but Right. Well, so, uh, I mean, it's interesting that it's heroin that they're mm-hmm. trying to get in prison and that it's heroin that... Yeah. That, so, you know, maybe there is that connection there. Could be. Anyway, I think it's, um, I, I think it's very interesting that we have this um, pact made by Ava that, know, without, that my man will do yeah. whatever you want without knowing what it is. Because you know yeah. it's going to be bad. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. really bad. And, you know, especially yeah. because you know, she hasn't been able to trust him. Right, and he hasn't and, performed for her. Yeah, right. So to speak. Sorry, I'm having. So, a but I mean, that's you know, but she's still willing to make that pact yeah. and that jump, and yeah, uh, now, because she's and, desperate. And thinking, Absolutely, of course. That's what I think is great about it. She's desperate enough to make the, even though she can't really be sure that he, she can depend on him at the moment. Right. Because everything he's tried has but hasn't it's, worked. But it's but the only is, thing she's got. Yeah. But this is kind of the dilemma that I was talking about. If Boyd has taken care of the white supremacist girl gang that wants to beat her yeah. up, yes. where is the danger? Where is the desperation? I'm not intimidated well, by the the older lady. Well, yeah, but all, you, all she has to do is is let let everybody know, oh, by the way, the reason why you don't have your drugs is because of her. Right, and exactly. And then forget it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And, okay. you know, not only are you going to be put back on get it through the um, old methods, yeah. Judy, you yeah. know, you're going to be doing <laughs> Penny's job. I mean, that's a pretty big yeah. motivator for her, too. Yeah. She's, uh, she's got a fair amount of things. But it also made me we're think, just not seeing them, though, and I think I that's part of what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I mean, and the other thing yeah, I was thinking not. is, the, what we're also not seeing is, um, if since she hasn't really been able to depend on uh, Boyd, well, I mean, let's face it, he did keep the white supremacist gang from killing her, g- can, killing her even mm-hmm. though he didn't stop prevent them from beating her right okay so he did do that but i'm wondering if you know because she makes this pack so easily i know she's desperate and you know she i'm 
sure she's going to, the next time I talk to him, I'm going to make sure that I can get some heroin. But does she have a backup? What if he can't? Is, she, is there somebody else that we don't know about yet that where she's going, okay, I'm, since I can't rely on right. Lloyd, I'm going to get somebody else. Right. I don't think it would deserve them to, to have like a beat or two of seeing her in her quiet desperation, in uh -huh. her, you know, those moments. If, yeah. if that's where she's at, she seems pretty cocksure. There was, I can only think of one time where we actually saw her like, oh my God, what am I going to do? Oh, she's by the bed and stuff. And she, right. Yeah, she has, she's had, they've, had, they've taken a few moments with her to do that. Yeah, but they but, didn't. But emotionally, I don't think she's as mm -hmm. out there as she could be. Well, it's interesting because we had that is. moment with Wendy in the bathroom when she was in the diner with the Jack mm -hmm. and uh, she went into the bathroom. Excuse me, she goes yes, in the bathroom, she's yes. looking in the mirror, and she has that moment where she's that. But we didn't really see that this week with uh, Ava. Ava. Mm -hmm. so, but Ava may have, she's already made her bed. It's like, screw it. Whatever happens, happens. I got I to gotta do it. Yeah, yeah. But it does make me think that maybe there's something else, a second plan or plan B. She's pretty resourceful. Yeah. That Ava uh Crow. Yeah. Crowder. Ava <laughs> Crowder. Crowder. Sorry. <laughs> I know they get them mixed I, up. Did I already say this last week that I yeah. want to kill all these people for doing Dewey, Dilly, Danny, oh, <laughs> Crow, Darryl. Crowder, Daryl, yeah. Crowder, yeah. Crow. It's right. make, it makes me crazy. And, okay, you know since you brought him up, let's move on to that storyline because we got to get to the boys in Mexico. Right. So Boyd and his and cronies. His, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get it? <laughs> uh, are sitting in the desert. In the desert yeah. So, and here's the big question I have, and I, I, I put it towards you. Yeah. Why in the hell last week did, they, why did they bother calling Yoon? Why didn't they just bury the damn bodies? Why didn't they figure, I mean, because. That's the first thing that I, that's why I got set off. I mean, I get it. From the story, the mm -hmm. in, in order to keep the storyline going, yes, okay, call the Yoon, because then that, you know. But, but seriously, w w why did they even do that? Why, why wouldn't the first thing they've done, oh, damn. Well, we can't let them know that we've got these bodies here. We can't take them over the border. They're in the middle of this Mexican desert. Bear the damn thing. The yeah. only thing I can think of is they needed to set up that uh, who's Boyd's right hand man? Jimmy. Jimmy. Jimmy can speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. There was nothing in that conversation in that whole. There, there wasn't. I honestly, I expected him to go. I don't see. I don't see anybody's. You know, and then like the guy pull a gun on, shoot yeah. one of his guys, mm -hmm. and go. That's the penalty. I don't see a body either. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a reason for them to be there. An actual. I, I don't know. I don't know. Because I the haven't first got thing, a good answer yeah. for that. The first thing that happened last week, I'm going, well, it's not a problem. You got a truck, yeah, yeah, and there's a yeah. desert. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how many berries are, and bodies are buried in the Nevada desert? And the other thing is, boy, <laughs> if Boyd <laughs> screwed up that bad, wouldn't the last thing he want to do is let people know? Cut right. Yeah. Call his boss. Well, or, and he even said it to uh, Yoon's right-hand man, which was, look, when I make a deal, I'm gonna, I want to make a friend, I want to keep a friend. So it's like, why do you even call Yoon and right. know this? Right. Yeah. I mean, w was there thinking, and, and uh, obviously this is all speculation was they're thinking that yeah we can bury the bodies but somewhere at some point they're going to be found and then that we're screwed uh, maybe let's say that's the answer but there's not a lot of crime down in mexico <laughs> <laughs> so i'm sure they're going to put full resources yeah. on just trying to figure out where those four bodies came uh -huh. from yeah so yeah. no that was the thing where i again it's one of those moments where when you have such tight good writing and everything is really solid and it's left hanging that way. It it's stands just, out. It just does stand out. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, they covered it in the sense that I liked the whole storyline with the federales and you know how are we gonna hide the you know what are we gonna do with the bodies and what about the drugs and we, and that's the little uh, uh, reveal about the fact that the, they didn't lose anything in the truck because there was right. nothing in the truck except dead bodies. I like that. That was right. kind of fun. Right. And cross, that made yeah. a lot more sense to me. Yeah, right. that that conversation made a lot more sense, and I totally bought them as Bible salesmen. But you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but here's what here's what I'm thinking as I go. If you take out that scene where he calls Yoon and 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 Yoon's guy comes out, you you could still have the bodies in the truck. You could still have everything. What are we gonna do? I don't know. Okay, great. You call your guy. Boom. Put the bodies in the truck. You could have had all that. There's no. And it would have looked even cooler because we wouldn't have known that the whole ruse from Boyd was. The whole uh, switch, getting the drugs out of the truck and put them in the car. Yeah. You could have had a conversation damn near verbatim. Yeah. You could have still had Boyd tell somebody else, I don't see any bodies exactly. here. Exactly. And have Daryl and Danny, mm -hmm. Darnell, whoever it is, <laughs> you know, talk about their old friend and everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, I didn't see what, unless there's a payoff later, but it just seemed out of character for Boyd to air that much dirty laundry for no reason. Yeah. The, the one thing, like you mentioned, that we did discover in that scene mm -hmm. was that Jimmy speaks English. But we did discover Spanish. that. 
Spanish. Mm -hmm. Sp thank you. We, but we really discovered that, you know, later on. Yeah. So I, I mean, and I don't know. I call he, that. Yeah. yeah well, because well, we get it with the federales. He speaks Spanish to the, the exactly. federales. So that would that's the exactly. time to learn it, and that's the time we need to know it. And who cares about before? Yeah. And then he overhears them at the uh, little outdoor the bar or the restaurant diner or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah, restaurant. Yeah. So, uh, but I I love the the double cross. And, yes. You know, it's classic Boyd. Uh, and and the way they played it, I mean, I bought it. I, you know, and Boyd, you know, you know, not playing, tipping his hand to the federales, you know, being really reluctant about giving them the money and being, no, yeah. the truck's not for sale right. and all that other stuff. I right. was buying it. Yeah, right, because it makes makes that truck with the dead bodies in it so much more attractive Absolutely. to the federales, and we want them to take those yes, bodies. Exactly, that, that was great. Yeah. Now, do you think that the dead bodies are going to come back to to bite Boyd and crew? You know, I don't know, because I, I was thinking about that, and how could they? The federales, okay, w so what are they going to do? We found this truck in the desert. It's got these bodies. It sure, they certainly could, right. but it makes a hell of a lot of work for them to explain everything away. It's probably more likely that the federales are just, crap, now we'll have to get rid of these right. dead bodies. Right, exactly, because they have no benefit of it, because no. they know th these guys have hightailed it north right. and are trying to get out exactly. of the country. Exactly, and, so. and what good could come of it uh, that they found a bunch of shot-up bodies in a truck that the, they can't trace? Yeah, unless they have, like, a dead body quota that they have to... Uh, something, yeah, know, exactly. Hit, it'll, it'll, it'll be, but it'll be, it'll it'll be another... It's pretty easy to hit that quota. Another <laughs> five dead bodies and how many <laughs> south of the border? Right. So... Yeah. The dialogue. Yeah, good point. The dialogue at their hangout place, waiting for their friend to show up, really seemed to indicate that was a done deal. That you know we pulled one. They're up not coming. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're not coming back. Not, yeah, we're, we're really close to closing this mm -hmm. thing out. But I mean, but they made a point of, uh, especially in this episode again, that you made a deal that you would have no dead bodies on this side of the border. Right. And so that's why it, the, our deal's off. And then they they went back on that because Boyd said, wait, wait. We'll get rid of these. Right. And so it could come back just because, look. Because Yoon needs to get reinvolved. Yeah, and we just, we we gave, we well, we let you go because you said you were going to get rid of these. And that's how you got rid of them? Right. And right. if that's the case, it's still better that Boyd does not tell Yoon. Because, yeah, because then Because yeah. that, you know, now Boyd has found out in a worse case. Yeah. Right. So, so either way. Right. Don't call him. But he already did, Boy, so yeah, we got to deal so with that. Damn it. Yeah, so I mean, that's the other thing is maybe it's going to come back yeah. later. Maybe that's why that scene was but, there. But it still would have worked even if he didn't call him because we, they'd already made the deal, no dead bodies. You're right. Mm -hmm. You're right. And then here they are, and you, you made one deal with, we made one agreement. No, no you're right. Bodies. You're right. So. But they might okay, have just, well. it might have been heat exhaustion. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We'll see. We'll <laughs> they see. tried to aerate so them the, with uh, bullets. Because Dewey did want air conditioning in the next yeah, vehicle. That's true. So, Dewey. The story about uh, Daryl and the sister, yeah, and all of that, uh -huh. and then Boyd brings it up when they're all standing. Flora's sister. Oh, Flora's sister. Yeah. Flora's sister. Flora's Got Flora's it. Yes. Sister, yeah. That was just to see if Daryl was going to screw Boyd. Yeah. Well, I think that, and to see how Flores is going to react to everything to get it, because you know you're trying to get the measure of a man. Right, because Boyd's testing him. Yeah. He's recounting but the I think story. What, I think what Boyd's testing is whether or not that story was true. Because, well, I think that was part of it, but I, also, I don't think that story was true. I think that was just a thing that they were doing to make it not look like, oh yeah, I know a guy. Yeah. Instead, but he's a, what a weird pushing. thing to say, because uh, you know you're going to go into business with somebody like that. I mean, that was a that was a very if it wasn't true, what a, why would you say that? It's Wait, a, so a your assertion is the the gang rape of Flores' sister didn't happen? That Daryl, yeah. <laughs> You're, you're, yes, you know. we do. <laughs> Daryl brought it. D Daryl made it up to get out of having to bring his connection Flores into the the deal of getting them over the border. Uh, no, I think it. I think it was part of a used plan, as a misdirection. As a it? misdirection to not say, "Hey, I know someone we can bring in." More like a reluctant, you know. Whereas Boyd says, "I don't screwed. care how you do this. This the, is your yeah. responsibility." Well, that is very interesting. If, if you need to get, and then later on, because that's the only reason I can think of why Boyd would say. Well, you're a forgiven man. Yeah, exactly. You know, and bring see, that I thought up. I was doing both. I thought he was testing the story, and I, I thought, okay, if it's a true story, I want to see how Flores reacts to it because this guy's going to have all my stuff, and he's really, if he's really pissed off at Daryl, my stuff's in jeopardy. Yeah. So but, I thought that was part on, of it, and I thought he was also saying, okay, if it's not a true story, I want to see how this guy reacts because I'm going to see what Daryl does. But when Jimmy went up to him and said, hey, you know, we got it, I just overheard something, mm -hmm. he goes, yeah, I know. So yeah. he already knew that Daryl was double. But I think he knew that when they were in the bus. I mean, not the bus, in the van, and they were talking together, he right. and Daryl and stuff, and Daryl's trying to say, you don't right. really trust. I don't think he trusted him for a second. No, I don't either. And I think he was he was already trying to figure out, okay, I'm going to have to use this guy. Right. And I know that's going to 
uh, I'm gonna have to figure a way around that anyway, because I know as soon as I put my trust in Daryl, it's gonna be get used. Right. And this all goes back to when they slip up, because we are having an in-depth conversation about the nuance of a scene yeah. and how deep it plays and who's who's positioning who. Right. And you can't miss <laughs> if you're looking at a series this closely. Right. Right. Agreed. All but right, that well, was definitely the if if I was going to follow the storyline, that was the storyline to follow this week. Yeah, was you know down in Mexico and you know the two clans trying not to kill each other. I can feel his insides going out. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, that was my one of my questions. Why are they laying on I top of know. the dead bodies? Why, why Couldn't they, they put the dead bodies over there and sit over here, maybe closer to the ventilation? Yeah, I don't know. That it wasn't that small a truck. <laughs> No, it really wasn't. That there grossed was, me out. There was room for everybody. I, that was oh, really gross. Oh, is that worse than a dislocated shoulder? Yeah, dead bodies are worse. <laughs> you didn't turn the sound down. No, because I couldn't hear the dead bodies <laughs> releasing their bowels like or whatever it was <laughs> they were doing. <laughs> okay. Can we move on? Yes, please. All right, that's it, I think. Yeah, Does so Boyd, Boyd is very point? suspicious about this whole oh, thing, yeah, he, and it's going to play knows, out. Jimmy, Jimmy speaks here. Spanish. Jimmy's going to be the the. He whisperer. learns that Daryl had s spoken to Flores on so they, Tuesday prior to his whole trip. They have a plan. Yeah. Right. Let's go home. Yeah. yeah. Shotgun. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's going to be, yeah, it's all going to come out. All right, so we got news and gossip. I do have some news and gossip. Dewey plays big in the rest of the season. That's another thing. Ooh, that I just, yeah, okay, but, finally. All right, well, we'll, we'll talk about that when we get yeah, to predictions. Okay. Uh, during filming two weeks ago, Nick Searcy made comments about his relationship with Raylan, Art's re relationship oh. with Raylan. Mm -hmm. uh, when asked about their latest rift involving information about the murder of Nikki Augustine, Nick said, I don't want to give away too much, but I found out some things about Raylan that I'd rather not have known. Really, I've got to be vague about it. This may be the biggest spat we've had. We've had some other things, but this one has a real permanent feel about it. Okay, what's what we were talking so, about? So yeah, so there there may be no coming back from that. Well, I don't know how you do. I mean, I don't I don't know how that's never part of their relationship anymore. Yeah. Well, it makes for an interesting story. Yeah. Yeah. That's where I would take it. Because you know, I look at the way Arlo. I mean, uh, Raylan has felt about his father and all the things that his father's done, and I'm looking at Nick going, yeah, feeling the same way about yeah. Raylan. Yeah. So exactly. The disappointment and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, Blondie Neil McDonough, who played Robert Quarles, Quarles and was disarmed by Raylan last season, <laughs> may be back. No, by, then he wasn't, not by Raylan. Despite his shortcomings. No. According to Zap2, and I'm not sure what you're trying, what you're going He wasn't yeah, disarmed by Raylan. No, Raylan wouldn't give his arm back. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right. kind of Anyway, Raylan. go ahead. According to Zap2, Timothy Oliphant said, the one-armed man, you never know. Maybe Neil's right. Maybe he could come back. If you didn't see him die, then they're not dead. That's right. And, you know, remember there was a one-armed man comment in last week's episode? Yeah, yeah. So was that maybe Timothy Oliphant being coy, mm, or was it the writers having fun, or was it maybe a little bit of an Easter egg foreshadowing who's coming back next season? Interesting. Or interesting. later, we will see. There's some CG involved in do, that. Do you think he's been into rehab? You know, Quarles. He's Quarles is he off the rehab, Oxycontin? Yeah, probably. <laughs> no, he probably got doubly addicted because yeah, he had to have painkillers to go through the whole amputation <laughs> thing. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. No, he that's went through right. the amputation thing pretty quick. <laughs> that's true. We had to recover from it. Oh. Dewey Crow has a new job. What? Dewey Crow has a new job. According oh. to The Hollywood Reporter, actor Damon Harriman, a.k.a. Dewey Crow, will be reporting for duty as a popular nice guy cop in a pilot written by Breaking Bad's Vince Gilligan Whoa. called oh, really? Battle Creek mm -hmm. with director Brian Singer from X-Men wow. directing. Nice. Harriman's character, Detective Niblet, plays opposite another detective played by Cal Penn, okay. who we know from House and from the Harold and Kumar movies. The drama is set in the mean streets of Michigan. The show seeks to answer this question, is cynicism, guile, and deception enough to clean up the semi-mean streets of Battle Creek, Michigan? <laughs> In the face of complete lack of resources, or is the exact opposite true, that it takes naivete, trust, and a boatload of resources? Mm. With character names like Niblet, Funkhauser, Fontanelle, and <laughs> Goosewicks, the show is reported to be a drama, but will probably have some comedic nods. I would hope really? so. Really? With, mm. with Dewey? I don't see that. <laughs> Battle Creek was originally devised by Vince Gilligan in 2002, <clears throat> prior to the launch of Breaking Bad, mm -hmm. and it was a spec script. Just okay. Okay. You know what well, phrase that, that you never hear? 
What's that? Mean Streets of Laguna Hills. No. No. You don't. You is, don't. There, is there no, any more news? You don't. One more thing. This was from uh, the uh, – what was I just talking about? The thing I was going to tweet with um, – Jerry Burns. Okay. Jerry Burns. Okay. So he was talking about how the, in the season premiere, there, everybody was covered in blood. Right. And he said, uh, he said. When he went up to Detroit and they had a, Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, he, and the guy got shot right in front of him and yeah. he got blood all over him. He said, uh, we knew we were going to get shot, that, that we were going to get a shot of the blood in the face. It was surprising when it comes at you really hard. It comes at you so fast that I didn't have time to blink. So my eyes were wide open. He says, you know what I'm saying? It hit my eyeball. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, the squint on camera was completely real. The fluid went right into our eyeballs. So, Steve, when you were talking about skin flaps and where the squibs are and all yeah. that kind of stuff, I yeah. thought I kind of brought that in for you because Thank I you. thought you'd like a little of the gross Thank factor. Thank you. So that is what we have for news. <laughs> right, and and okay, let's get sweet. to predictions. Well, before we, you guys move on, I got yeah. a did you guys find out if uh, the girl that was murdered or killed the camera operator. Mm -hmm. Did she get put into the Oscars? Yes, thank she you for did. bringing that up. Um, oh. So last Sunday was the Oscars. They did the in memoriam with the film, and she was not included in the film, but there was a, a banner, banner at the bottom, lower third banner at the banner. end that said uh, her name, her, you know, in memory of Sarah Jones. So she yeah. did get included. Thank you for asking about that. She thank did get included in the in memoriam in okay. that way. Appreciate it. Yeah. All right, let's get on to predictions uh, now. One of your news items, the Dewey news item, yes. leads me to because I was I was going to predict that Dewey will not survive this season. Yeah, I think prior that to you learning that, now that really confirm for me it confirms it because the way they seem to be taking his particular arc was he was he was even though he was a low level criminal he was kind of you know what's the word guileless in a sense. I mean yeah. you know, the, the fact that all he really wanted was his little you know he wanted a above pool and a pool. business. His exactly. Dream. He just wanted his dream. But now yeah. he's going in to slow to send he actually killed as you know right. so I, I don't think he's, he's gonna survive. He's getting involved with heroin. I mean this is nothing Yeah, he wants. and I, I just don't think that this is the world for him anymore and I don't think he's He's right, and he also had the big reflective moments with yeah. the, the two. My dream, my dream, all that kind of stuff. Right, exactly, and was giving away his possessions and stuff yeah. like that. Um, you know, and um, uh, Graham Yost says that he's going to play big in the rest of the season, and yeah, we know that yeah. play big means he's go home. Play big. I, think, I think he's. I think it's he's going to get worse. Meaning, he. I think he's going to really uh, go after people, and I think he's going to actually kill more people. And by the end of it, he'll be dead. Do you think we're going to be sad that Dewey Crow is gone? Yeah, I think they're going to do it. Yeah, because you're going to feel for the guy, even though you know he's not the he's not he's not a really a good guy. But in this world, he's kind of like hapless and stuff. So right. You do feel for him because you you think that had he been given the right opportunities earlier, he probably wouldn't have gone down this road because. Well, that's the that's I the case for kind of everybody. I yeah. think they'll have to be careful with him. I, um, if he does go, you know, super dark, it's just going to be putting down a, a rabid dog mm -hmm. as opposed to you know, well, putting down a Dewey dog. And that's what I was going to say was I think there needs to be a certain amount of um, he deserves to die mm -hmm. that will have to come into play in addition to him, you know, being the hapless criminal. I mm -hmm. think we're going to have to feel okay about him dying. Yeah, yeah. You know, right. sort of, sort of the... Well, then if that happens, I predict that, and I think Matt has said this too, uh, that that's going to be one of the driving forces of the final season of somehow Dewey's death is going to un propel us into propel season us into six? Really? Other, you know. Well, we have Eric Roberts coming in yeah. to, I believe it's you next episode. Next yeah, episode? he was in the coming ups. And oh. he's... <laughs> and is he here? Yeah. yeah, he's coming Eric, in here. Oh, speaking of that, we do have two guests that we're not going to talk about yet, but we're yeah. we're lining up that oh, okay. we, uh, we hope to have one coming in next week. Mm -hmm. um, and if we get that confirmed in time, I will we'll request the that you tweet us um, and email us. Whatever questions, questions if that you have. Um, but we have a couple of guests lined up, and we're hoping to have one next week, so be sure mm -hmm. to tune in. Do we have any yeah, other predictions? Okay. Eric Roberts. Um, I think he's going to be fun to watch. <laughs> I, I, think he's, I think he's a great bad guy, you know, with the hair and the teeth. But, he's gonna, well, is he's he going to be a good, bad, a good guy or a bad guy? Because he was in a shooting range. And I mean, was it a Glencoe shooting range? What kind of shooting range? I don't, I don't know. They don't give us anything they, on these. It's like, it's like Graham Yost absolutely. Or is absolutely, he a good, bad guy? It's like you know Graham I mean? Yost himself absolutely directs the trailers for the coming ups and gives us nothing. <laughs> I know, exactly. It's like a Breaking Bad trailer. What the hell? What, like, the, what do I know about nothing. that? But people but it's die. Enough, it's enough to go, okay, i got to find I'm gonna out what's watch. going on. Yeah, all right. Yeah. 
Any other predictions? No. Okay, on that note, let them know where they can find you. Tamara. Uh, hey, you can find me on Twitter at Tamara Berg, T-A-M-A-R-A-B-E-R-G. Also, my website is TamaraCentral.com. Want to know how to, sh- to saber the top of a champagne? bottle the saber I'll open a champagne show bottle. Nice. you if you look at my website check out that sabering thing it is it's cool uh you can find me at bottomly steven but more important go to bandcamp.com and check out bears and you their four song ep it's oh. bandcamp.com bears and you their four song ep mm-hmm. kind of involved but more important it's just really cool music and i think you should check it out you may very well enjoy it I'm totally gonna check okay, it out okay and we will talk to you next time on behalf of everybody here we want to thank you for listening talk See you to you next later week thanks from executive producers maria menounos kevin undergaro phil svitek and the entire AfterBuzz tv staff we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz tv network to watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here, and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.